let's just go by. Come, come, put, put, put. I think the first concept for what turned into play was to have a table that kind of moves away as you approach it. Years later, we had some attempts, maybe 2011, like so 11 years ago, to figure out how we could build uh, moving objects, robots. Uh, eventually, I switched over to chairs um, in maybe 2016. Technology also caught up with a lot of the what we needed, you know, in terms of sensors and so on. And if you think about it, as a human being, you always respond to any kind of stimulus that comes at you. So you continuously try to understand and read in a pattern. Logically, we do that. That's why we have a lot of misunderstandings as people, because we, we are there with the pattern before we are there to listen what it actually does. Um, so in some way, that's what these chairs do. And let's say you approach a chair and the chair moves away. You're like, I get it. So you go a step back, you approach the chair again, you expect it in this moment to move away. So you're like, now I figured it out. You approach the chair again, it doesn't do anything. Then you think it's maybe broken. So we test something, test something, test something. If something takes a second to respond, we already think it doesn't work. Like in our daily life, you ask something, you don't get an answer, you ask again, and it's maybe the, the answer is more complex, but you don't listen. This work here basically use human expectation as a medium, people interacting or observing these chairs. Together makes the work, not the chair. This one keeps coming back at me, you see? And that part is really looking and recording and, and whatever, you know, like in a plan there is this view, the side view, the top view, whatever. And that gives like the, just the kind of volume this object occupies somehow. Yeah, the mirror came, I wanted, wanted the rest to disappear almost, you know, more. I had many different uh, thoughts about what these things really are. We don't really see anything in this world, we see what we project onto this world, you know. To actually look is very difficult. There's a series of these candle portraits and, and they usually are people, in all cases, pretty much people I know. And some of them I know very well. It's, it's kind of not relevant, it's more relevant for myself. I mean, most people that come to this uh, museum here, they don't know my friend Francesco, uh, who happens to be a curator. So when we were taking all these recordings and photographs, he always stands there, as he always stands there with the phone. These poses I look for is actually always my, the, the more go-to relax pose of a, of a human being. Um, Richard Evident made this portrait series in the American West. So they put this white backdrop down that's in the 70s. It was a big thing. You, each shot you put in this thing, you have to go change it and take the sheets of film out. And also it's a different time. So people had less of an awareness of how they look in an image because it's less easy to make an image of yourself, you know. Most shots were done empty. They put in empty cassettes, they make the real portrait, the people stand there like they pose. And eventually, as it goes on, they, they go back to just to whatever their, their natural position is. And then they started to put in the film and actually make the photos. Yeah, so in that way, Francesco came about. Once they become a candle and they actually have some form of function or they don't need to be, they don't have the weight of something that's there forever. And they become active through the flame. So are these chairs, I mean, they move, you know, this, it's, um, it's a life, you know. As any um, sculpture or any portrait in art, as time moves, the individual usually recedes into the background and the image the person creates come in the foreground, you know. I, I, I don't know, it's too hard to think about in the future. Or it's, too, it's kind of pointless in some way, you know, because you, so many things shift, not just technology, context always moves. And I, I do think that things that were boring in their own time hardly ever become interesting down the line, you know? <laughs>
art is frustrating because it doesn't do anything. <laughs> to me, I mean, in some way, I mean, you gotta wait till it does something in your memory, but it's a little bit frustrating, um, you know, because you want it to... Exactly. And it's just there. <laughs> <laughs>